بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آج جو میں آپ کو سکھانے کی کوشش کروں گا وہ بیسک اسکل جو میڈیکل اسٹوڈنٹس کو سکھایا جاتا ہے اور میں سمجھتا ہوں خاص طور پہ نیورالوجی کے فیلڈ میں دس از سم تھنگ ویری امپورٹنٹ وی آل نیڈ ٹو لرن سو وی کین ایکچولی گیٹ ڈیٹیلس آف دا پیشنٹ ٹو دا پوائنٹ دیٹ وی کین گائڈ آر پیشنٹس اینڈ وی کین آلسو ڈیوائز آر ٹریٹمنٹ بیسڈ آن آر ہسٹری سو آئی گانا ٹاک اباؤٹ ہسٹری ٹیکنگ اسکلس سو وین وی ٹاک اباؤٹ دا ہسٹری ٹیکنگ اسکلس دا موسٹ امپورٹنٹ تھنگ از وائی دا پیشنٹ از کمنگ ٹو دا کلینک سو دا فرسٹ تھنگ از ریزن فار کنسلٹیشن اور وائی دا پیشنٹ از کمنگ ٹو ہاسپٹل آئی یوزلی رائٹ ڈاؤن ان ون لائن دیٹ دا پیشنٹ کیم ان فار اے ویلویشن آف ہیڈ ایک اور وٹ ایور بٹ دین کمز دا مین بلک وچ از وٹ وی کال history of present illness i use abbreviations especially when we are documenting details in the clinic um, uh, we have a small amount of time and we have to document a lot of details and get a lot of details from the patient so it is important to use abbreviation that's what i feel because it saves your time and you're not concentrated on writing you are more concentrated in interaction with the patient so history of present illness there is a general scheme which i follow Naturally, you can read different schemes online and make a scheme of your own and you feel comfort with. Because the most important thing is your, your reflex development. Okay, so you develop a scheme of your own, keep working on that scheme so it becomes very smooth and you're not forgetting the basic steps. So when it comes to history of present illness, I follow the abbreviation O-F-D-P-L-I-Q-R-E. A A. So O F D P L I Q R A A. This is a basic scheme, especially when it comes to the patient with pain complaint. So if the patient is not having pain or some other complaint, then you have to naturally modify it. And I just cut it over here in that case. Okay. O F D P. So the O stands for onset. F stands for frequency. D stands for duration and P stands for progression. So this is the basic steps what you're gonna get for any disease process. So just remember that there has to be a basic scheme and then you're gonna get to the more specific questions thinking about the pathology you are thinking that patient is having. Okay, and then the, for, the, for the extended scheme is location which naturally relates more to the pain, okay? Intensity, quality, radiation, and then associated features and aggravating features. or relieving factors. So this is kind of the basic steps of history of present illness. Again, if you're thinking Parkinson disease, then you not only get how long ago it started, you also try to get the idea of different, like when the patient started falling, when the patient started Um, uh, getting slower according to the family and according to the patient. So then you can kind of refine your idea of present his history, history uh, taking skills. And if there are falls, then you can ask the patient how frequently the patient is falling, is there any loss of consciousness or tongue bite with uh, loss of consciousness. So you kind of build on these basic steps, but then you have to get to the more specific questions and you can directly ask those questions from the patient. So this is history of present illness. And then comes the, the next part, which is the, the rest of the bulk of the history of present illness, uh, of, of history taking, which is your past medical history. And I usually have a template where a patient can write down um, if they have diabetes, how long they have it, okay? Because we need to know the duration of any previous ongoing chronic medical problem. You can also ask for the surgical history if the patient has any surgical history. It could be part of the past medical history as well. And then comes the most important part when it comes to the uh, uh, 
patients for physicians or medicine uh, patients or the pathology which is pertaining to the medicine field is the medications. This is very key information and I always stress my junior colleagues, my residents, that you need to write down the, the original formula or the name of the drug. Don't write down brands because there could be many brands and you just get confused which medicine actually it is. So you're going to write down the name of the medicine, the original formula, the frequency, how frequently the patient is taking it, like supposedly if it's paracetamol or panadol, okay, so you can write down paracetamol, okay, or you can write down panadol, or you can write down the, gen the original formula. And then you're going to write down the, the dose, 500 milligram, and then you're going to write down BID. As physician, we know what it means, BID, but for documentation sake, on your paper, paper, save your time, just write down BID rather than writing it two times daily. But you have to write down each and every medicine patient is taking on a regular basis or even on a non-regular basis. So after the medication, you write down the family history. Okay, so when it comes to the family history, I just write down F slash H. And again, I document any pertinent medical illness, like I'm a neurophysician and a neuromuscular subspecialist. So when I say if a patient has a muscle disease, then I will check is there any rest of the family member or close family member has muscle disease and try to do the family pedigree, especially if I need to do the uh, genetic testing. But family history and pertinent medical problems you have to write down. After that is the social history. And when it comes to the social history, I always write down the patient is married or not. That gives you the idea about the sport network of the patient. So you're going to write down patient is married. Okay. How many kids patient have? If it's a young female patient is coming in with a, with, a, with a headache and the youngest child is a few months old, you can understand why there is headache because she's waking up a couple of times in the night and that could be the reason or the trigger factor for her migraines worsening. So you're going to write down that and then also you're going to write down the smoking status or alcohol intake. So when I write down abbreviations, if you use a circle on top of smoking for S, it means patient is non-smoker just to save your time rather than writing the whole non-smoker thing. Similarly, for alcohol, I just write down ETOH. And if patient is non-alcoholic, I just make a circle on top of it, which gives me the idea that this complaint is not there. Then in Special cases, you can ask for the travel history, any history of close contact, like if there is a chances of COVID infection, you ask the detail if the, any nearby relative or a friend has COVID, and you can ask those details from the patient. So these are the kind of the basic steps, and that gives you the idea where you're going to direct your examination to. I do a screening uh, neurological examination, and then I do get to the specific neurological examination. I hope it will help the junior uh, junior students, junior residents, uh, especially who are just getting into the history taking, because this is the very core skill in the, in the present time when everybody is busy, we have a lot of patients coming into emergency department. It becomes even more important because if you are not getting important information or if you are missing important information, there is possibility we end up doing a lot of investigations and still not knowing what's going on with the patient. Thank you very much.